So we just had Square's E3 press conference. Uh, not really as much press conference. It was more like a Nintendo Direct kind of where they had it pre-recorded and it was set up and it only ran 30 minutes if that. It might have been a little less. And I was a little surprised it was so quick and honestly, I was a little surprised it was so bland. There, there wasn't anything big, nothing surprising, nothing massive. They had two new games to show, but they didn't really show much about them, and they definitely missed out on telling us about anything huge from their bigger IPs, some stuff we hear about and we know about, but we haven't seen much about, at least in its current form. For example, Final Fantasy VII Remake was nowhere to be seen, and that should tell you how true some of those development statements we hear are in the background where we hear like, oh, they had to scrap the whole thing after they cut ties with uh, CyberConnect. Um, and, you know, we, we hear about development issues with that game a lot. And it looks like, honestly, it really might be true. Maybe they did scrap this stuff. And if it's not being shown until next year, that would be an issue because we have a feeling we're going to start hearing about the new consoles next year. But... We do also have Tokyo Game Show, so I'll at least be tentative there. We could see it, but the fact that they couldn't show anything, I'm talking anything, like they could show uh, a cinematic trailer, like The Quiet Man. That's one of their new IPs that they seem to be showing. That at least had a trailer. It was live action. They actually had real actors, and then it seemed to switch to gameplay briefly, uh, like visuals and everything in game, but they didn't have much about that either. In fact, they said check back later on this year, and we'll find out more about it. It appears to be a PS4 game, uh, mostly a PC game, I think, too, but definitely PS4 is what they were focusing on there. And then they showed a new IP from uh, from from Platinum Games. Okay, Babylon. It looked like Babylon looked interesting from Platinum Games. Again, they didn't really show anything. They showed some quick teaser in the beginning, and that was about it. This whole presentation felt like they really just didn't have much to show. This is almost like like a year where they can't really do much because their other projects are still heavily in like early stages of development, like Final Fantasy VII Remake, and the Avengers Project. Where is that? What I, I guess that really is in the earliest stages to where they can't, again, even show a cinematic trailer they could put together to show the direction of the game. That's one of the biggest things we have right now about the Avengers project. Square is doing it, and we kind of want to know how they're going to be tackling this game. But again, nothing was there. Now, they did show the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer that we've kind of already seen, essentially, right? Microsoft showed a trailer, and it looked like it was more of the same. They did show, of course, Ratatouille. People were pretty excited from that, from the orchestral event that they had. And they, of course, hit us with that release date again, January 29th. So, sure, Kingdom Hearts 3 was there. They also had an interesting crossover with Final Fantasy XIV, where they did a, a crossover with Final Fantasy XIV and Monster Hunter World, which is interesting. I don't really play a lot of Final Fantasy XV, but it looks like... Or, 14, sorry. Final Fantasy XIV. But it looks like the Monster Hunter universe will be entering Final Fantasy XIV, is what it looked like, as they had a monster from the Monster Hunter World series kind of drop in with a bunch of players uh, ready to attack that, that enemy in Final Fantasy XIV, which is, which is fine for people who still play that game and everything. I know, it's, I know it's a popular game online now. They've done a lot to fix it from how it first started. But uh, that wasn't, that to me, that wasn't a massive announcement for them to be making there. And then they showed Octopath Traveler, a game we know about. They didn't really show anything new. They just reminded us that it's coming out next month. Uh, seriously, it's like a month away. It was July 13th. So it's coming up quick. And we've already even played that game. I was hoping they would show something from that game just to get us even more excited. But uh, nothing, nothing was shown at all there. Just Cause 4. We know about Just Cause 4 because of the leaks. And then we saw a trailer somewhat from Microsoft, and they showed us more here where they actually showed gameplay. They explained some of it. And yeah, it looked better this time than what we saw yesterday. That's cool. That, that's fine. Uh, Just Cause, I, I, I played two. I didn't really get into three. I'm actually surprised that the series has continues as well as it does, considering I don't know if it sells the best, but I guess there's still at least somewhat of a fan base for it because they're continuing with it. Of course, Avalanche is making it, and it's using, apparently, according to them, a new engine with the, their newest form of the Apex engine and everything. Cool. That's fine. For people who really like Just Cause, I'm sure they're going to get a kick out of it, and that's fine. Looks like they had weather effects, tornadoes, blizzards, lightning, all that, I guess, will affect the world as you play through it, and that, that's good. That's good to see. Tomb Raider was also on display, and... Tomb Raider has been uh, an interesting series because they keep saying this is kind of Laura's journey to becoming the Tomb Raider and she still doesn't have like her dual pistols. I assume 
this is when she gets her dual pistols, or at least I would hope so. But they showed it. It's interesting because it kind of reminded me a bit of Snake Eater at times, right? Splinter Cell at times. It was definitely more stealthy. The, the idea it looked like was to do that. They even had a, a thing where you could see how afraid they are. You had your predator vision, and it looked a lot more violent. Of course, the Tomb Raider games that we've had previously, Rise of Tomb Raider and then just Tomb Raider, were more violent games. They're mature rated games. They're violent compared to the old Tomb Raiders, but this one looked like it was taking it kind of to the next level. Now, it's going to take place in the jungle. You can camouflage yourself with mud and leaves and stuff. So they look like they're getting more to the stealth side of things. And yeah, I think people are going to at least enjoy that. But I, I think this is it. I think this is the end of their, their build up to her becoming the Tomb Raider. And then I'm going to be curious where they go after that. They did show more of Captain Spirit. Uh, that's a game that's going to be free to download. It appears to be somewhat linked to Life is Strange universe, but it's not, as they said, a Life is Strange 2. I like the look of the game. It looks it looks fun. It, lo you know, it looks like a cool idea with uh, kind of showing the, uh, the, the child side with their imagination and then cutting over to the real world, which is much more depressing. I think that's going to uh, resonate with people who remember when they were younger. That's kind of what this is going to be. And it's going to be 100% free later this month. So that's cool. June 26th, it'll be out. And that's that's good to see because it, it's, it's a good idea to give people a free game like that to get them into the universe to then maybe check out Life is Strange and then possibly the next Life is Strange as we get further there. They also show Dragon Quest XI, which... Okay, I mean, here's the, it was really funny to see that because we know it's coming out, right? It's coming out uh, September, so it's not too far off. It's coming out on PS4 and uh, Steam first, which is, which is good. I mean, that's good to see it coming out, but it's uh, no mention of the Switch version. They also told us before that's way off. Like, we're talking, like, maybe next year it'll be out, like, like next holiday. That's pretty far off. Nothing about the 3DS version, and, of course, it's weird to see this because it's been out in Japan for a while now. Like, it's sold really well there and everything, uh, but it's just for the English audience, obviously, and the Western audience, and it's coming out later this year. It's just, it's funny there's no mention of the Switch version. In fact, if you look back through Square's presentation, they really didn't do a lot of what they said they were going to be doing when we heard about uh, their interview a while ago when they are talking about the big Final Fantasy anniversary that was happening. Uh, they talked about how they want to go back and get older IPs and bring them up, and it's, they didn't. They didn't really do that so far, anyway. This feels like this was an E3 presentation that they essentially had to phone in because they just didn't have a lot of new stuff to show. They showed a lot of stuff we've already seen or heard about. You know, we knew about Kingdom Hearts. Now we know about the date, at least we know about that. But we've heard about Kingdom Hearts. You know, we've heard about Dragon Quest XI, right? We've heard about Final Fantasy XIV. It's cool that it gets that Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter crossover. We know about Octopath. We played Octopath even. We've played the full demo. So it seems like they showed up and said, we, well, we can't show the Avengers project. Final Fantasy VII Remake just restarted development like a year ago. <laughs> I, it's just, this is crazy, right? I guess next year is when they're really going to show a lot of stuff. And this year they kind of just had to phone it in. I was disappointed. I was. I'm glad it was a Nintendo Direct pre-recorded style because if this was live and it dragged on for 45 to 50 minutes, it would have been unbearable almost, I would say. Uh, but they at least have some games coming out this year with uh, Tomb Raider coming out this year. And then of course, we know about Dragon Quest Eleven. So they're not all 2019 games. And the newer game from Platinum Games with Babylon and then uh, the, the Quiet, that looks interesting at least, right? Those are to the point where I'm like, okay, I got Quiet uh, Man. And then we have uh, the Babylon. And I want to see more about it, but we just saw pretty generic trailers from them. So We'll have to keep an eye on those and figure out. Let me know what you guys think about this Square presentation because I was pretty disappointed. You guys watched it with me um, on stream and I think a lot of people were. Maybe we just expected too much from Square, Square Enix who tends to run behind schedule most times, right? Even Kingdom Hearts was supposed to come out in 2018. They had to push it a couple months, probably for production of things like the discs and, and digital distribution and stuff. They had to push it back to January. So they're just, they're not very good at keeping a schedule. They're, they seem unorganized in the background with their company. That's the best I can tell, really, from an outside perspective. And I think this presentation just, just showed that more, right? I, I, I do. So, disappointment, yes. But hope for the future, absolutely. Because the Avengers Project, I think, is being shown next year. And I think Final Fantasy VII Remake might at least have some sort of presence at Tokyo Game Show. Otherwise, Final Fantasy VII Remake might be a PS5 game. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's, it's supposed to be episodic. Maybe it won't be now, but it's supposed to be. And, uh... We were thinking it was going to come out on the PS4. People were saying maybe this year. No, no. I'd be shocked, honestly, if it comes out in 2019. Seriously, if Kingdom Hearts missed its 2018 release, expect 2020 for Final Fantasy VII Remake, if we're lucky.
It might be a PS5 game we'll have to see. Thanks guys for watching. Again, like the video if you enjoyed it, dislike it. If not, let me know your thoughts down below about this Square Enix conference. I wasn't a fan, but, but they at least showed some stuff for this year. Thank you so much guys, and I'll see you next time.